Hello, 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 everyone. Thank you for tuning in. I am Jay Lee. This is Jay Lee's Corner. This is my review for Real Housewives of Atlanta, the season 11, episode 19. Next week is actually the season finale. I thought last week was, but next week is they said it. They said it's the season finale, and we can't wait. We really can't wait to see the, the reunion. But let's get into all this mess okay um i will say this episode did not have much because it focused on like two things okay eva messy ass marlo and candy's new well four things candy's new location for olg and nini and greg <sighs> nini ass need to be like just smack the fuck up okay someone need to go smack Nene with like four fat pillows like right in the face like knock the whole unit off her head and just berate her with a whole bunch of pillows and I say that because I don't want to say someone should be violent towards her so if you hit someone with pillows it's less violent but if you get like one of them hard pillows and just knock her in the face a couple times anyway so the episode starts off. We see a little stuff from all of them. They, you know, hang around. You know, Eva on her little honeymoon. You know, we we just see stuff that don't really matter because it's like a little filler shit. On to the bullshit. So messy ass Marlo, Nene, go visit. Me. Yep, messy ass Marlo, messy ass Marlo at messy ass Marlo's house. You know, and Greg like, you know, don't be gone too long. I feel kind of nauseous. I'm gonna take something for, my, for the nauseousness. But I do, I need you. I ain't gonna be crying gone longer. Like, I'll be back. So she go in, she's talking to Marlo. She's at Marlo little condo house. Um, and Tanya also come over. So we hear Nene holding, I'm unhappy with Greg. Greg is mean. And we say, I don't like Greg right now. It's all this stuff. But I don't want I don't want to look like a bad person by leaving him right now. So you're gonna look like a bad person by talking about it. Like you talk about it. Every episode, it's just as bad for you to talk about how hard this is on you as it would be if you left him. Okay, it's just as bad. You by not leaving him, it don't make you look any better. Let's just say that. Anyway, I guess to her, and sickness and health means nothing. So in the house, Marlo ass is being messy. She didn't find out from one of Eva's bridesmaids. Um. She called the girl on the phone, and the girl like, yeah, Eva live in a raggedy ass house. The house she did, she filming in, it's not even hers. She up here renting stuff. Her car got repossessed. You know what I'm saying? She taking care of Mike, um, and just all these things. And we, it's a, it's a someone who was in her wedding, who was literally on the phone with Marlo, telling Marlo and Nene and Tanya all this stuff. Now let me say this. Ain't no way on God's green earth that if I'm sitting somewhere and hearing someone say all this stuff about a friend of mine, I'm going to sit there and not be like, bitch, you ain't shit. Click and hang up the phone, okay? The simple fact, like, Nene looked happy sitting there sipping that tea. Oh, what about the car? Oh, child, I can't believe I mean, Nene looked like a goddamn kid in the candy store licking lollipops. Like... That ain't how friends do. Not It ain't no friend who sit there like that and be just laughing and like it ain't nothing. And only Tanya looked uncomfortable like, oh my God, I can't believe it. But Nene was just, she was smirking. Girl, anyway, you know, Nene gone there and said, well, I should be the one to tell to tell Eva because I'm the closer. Yeah, because she looks up to you. Only because you're the goddamn jolly. Look, Nene is a jolly brown giant. So Everyone has to look up to her. But Nene, you ain't shit. The simple fact that you've been on the show since, since you know, season one, you ain't shit. Because how you sat there and enjoyed the bullshit that Marla was feeding you from someone who used to be Eva's friend is some bullshit. Because of the role of reverse and, and anyone did that to you, you would be pissed off. So I don't say your monkey ass sitting up there looking like, oh, I can't, uh, oh, like you listen to it. You listen to Marla say the stuff first and you let Marla call this person. 
you were pissed when Phaedra tried to get your half sister, step sister on the show or even a conversation with your people on the show. But you're going to step in and you're going to allow Marlo to have a phone conversation with a bridesmaid and Eva's wedding saying how she broke her credit is bad, all these things. Nene ain't shit. Nene ain't shit. You can't say, look, Nene ain't shit. Nene ain't a friend. She was all on her eyes like, yeah, I've come to find out that these girls are my friends. They're co-workers. No, bitch, you a co-worker. You are a co-worker because you sat up there just enthralled in the juiciness of it all. That is how friends do. Look, it ain't not a damn person who could tell me a, a, a secret of a friend. Like, you can't do that without me saying, who the fuck is you, bitch? Hold on one second. Let me call someone on the phone. I would have called Eva on the phone. Like, Eva, listen to this shit. Who voices this, Eva? Let me know so we can go both go check this hoe. But that ain't what Nene did. Nene said that she enjoyed it. You want to know why? Because misery loves company. Anyway, Marlo then said, if that ain't her house, you know, she says it's her house, we should have a piece of live there. We should ride back. No, we should call her and say we in the area and ask her, can we use her bathroom? Bitch, Nene won't let you in her own house. Okay? And she knew you was coming. So you can't tell me, oh, girl... When she said, let's call her and say we in the area and see if she will let us in to use her bathroom. Nene wouldn't let you in the gate, bitch. So does that mean Nene don't live in her own house? Because Nene, Nene don't let anyone come over unannounced. So why would you then say, I'm going to unannounce, I'm unannounce myself. I'm going to go to someone's house unannounced and if they don't let me in, it means they don't live there. Marlo, you ain't shit either. Your coochie ain't shit. Your wig ain't shit. Your edges ain't shit. You ain't shit. I, girl. Tanya was the only one I felt in that scene felt uncomfortable. And I feel like because she's a newbie, she also didn't want to rock the boat. But you can tell she felt fucking uncomfortable. Girl, be careful who you call friend. Okay? Just be careful because people will, will tell you they're your friend and they not. And a friend don't mean, oh, I'm going to come and, and, and do all these things for you. A friend is somebody when you're not around, when you're not around, and some foul shit going on with your name in it, they nip that shit in the bud. And they let you know about it immediately, bitch. Immediately, bitch. Immediately. Anyway. That was all that was. Uh, Kenny and Ty opened up their second OLG gang a restaurant. They chit chat about that. Um, they're going to have a soft opening. Cool, cool, cool. She also brings up, because I think, because Mama Joyce was there. I, I don't know if Kayla was, is it Kayla? Ty daughter. I don't know if that was Ty daughter sitting there. I could I wasn't paying enough attention. I know Riley was, in, I, I'm assuming that was the other daughter, but she didn't really say shit. Um, so Kenny and Ty also, you know, they're moving forward with the surrogate situation. They liked talking to the surrogate woman who Dr. Jackie introduced them to. So they're going to move forward because they have two embryos left. So they're going to, you know what I'm saying, get them done. And Riley, for the most part, thinks, well, this should be a joint decision. I think we should all have a say so in it. And mom, mom would be like, well, no, you know, it's, it's really their decision. Riley feel like, you know, I've told y'all before, even y'all was having ace, that you don't be around enough to, you know, have more kids. I feel like Riley has a point, but then she does not have a point. I feel like Riley feels like you should be around all the time to raise your kids. When in hindsight, even regular parents go to work every day. Like Riley literally to me has a warped sense of reality only because when she was growing up her mom was always there um because her, her mom was not as busy and now that she's older and her mom is gone a lot I feel like she feels neglected like you 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 got a little bit older I'm a little bit older and now you feel like you don't have to be home a lot so if you have more kids that's even less time you can spend with me I feel like that's her main issue but she don't have to express that I do think Candy be busy. I really, really do. But she's a businesswoman. And I don't think I don't think that she's so busy that she's a bad mom. I think she's a working mom and she's doing the best she can. So again, Riley has a point, but then again, she does not have a point. And Candy brings up how like Riley was the same way with Ace. She did not want them to have Ace. And now she loves Ace. She was like, so excuse me, she'll be the same way, you know, we have more kids. Um, I like how my majority spoke up and said, you know, speaking as a mom who lost a child. She said, I wish I would have had more than just two kids because, you know, when I lost my son, I didn't say candy. And even Todd then said, like, even for me, I'm a, I'm an only kid. And I wish I would have had a sibling to have been able to go through the process of losing my mom. And so I think Riley 
in different ways is spoiled. And so, and I don't mean that in a bad way, but I mean, she just, she don't get life yet. Like, for her, things are black and white. You should be home all the time if you want more kids. And that's just not the life that Candy lives, you know? Um. Anyway, we do see Dennis and Portia um, planning, their, planning their gender reveal. And it's going to be like, she said a carnival theme? Some kind of weird thing. And not weird, was it, it was either, was it carnival or circus was the same thing. Um, cause they were talking about a candy, cotton candy machine and the kissing booth. I think like a carnival. And I, I feel like, and now we have not seen the episode yet next week. I feel like when the people were walking around telling her what it was going to do, I was like, I don't think they're going to do it all right. Like, I don't think they're going to execute what she says she wants. I just don't, I feel like she going to be upset with them because I feel like she knows what she wants, but I feel like they... It just didn't seem, I don't know, something about them just didn't seem right with me. Anyway, so we then see her and Dennis having a little chit-chat or whatever. And then, you know, he likes to, what's after the, the gender reveal? The baby child and, of course, the wedding. And then he like, yeah, and also the prenup. So they both agree that they want to have a prenup, mainly because Portia say, like, when she had her last marriage, she left with basically nothing. But when she's going into this marriage, she has her own fortune, her own businesses, her own, she has her own. She has her own that she has came into this relationship with. So even though Dennis has his own company, so does she. So it makes sense for them both to want to protect their, you know, their assets. Um, so they're both okay with that. Now, Dennis wants to talk about moving. He wants to live in downtown L.A. And she is fine. I think I think she's in Duluth. And he like, well, yeah, we should look to get a place down in, in downtown Atlanta. And she's like, well, why? He said, well, I work downtown. Like, you work downtown. Like, it just makes more sense for us to be there. And she don't feel that way. She feel like, like, if we move downtown, the space is smaller. We're going to spend more money downtown because it's just it's just living downtown. That's how it is here, too, in Detroit. If you live in downtown Detroit, it's more expensive for no reason besides the downtown Detroit. Um, she And the places are not that big. Um, she brings up how... You know, my house is family ready. It's big. I paid for it. Um, and if we move from there to downtown, it's going to, you know, won't make any sense. Like, you know, you should really think about the fact that you're about to be a father and a husband and kind of let go of that whole single man, you know, bachelor pad, downtown, you know, club life, whatever. Like, it's going to be different. And of course, she was 100% right. I do think he wants to live downtown to be in that life. And she like a family life should be should be in my I have a whole home a huge home that I bought and paid for you know what I'm saying so why would I want to give that up and move to downtown Atlanta like I don't think so so you know they have to have that conversation we see Candy and Eva meet up because Eva's not back from her honeymoon and she's like oh yeah I have a glow had sex and it's wonderful and she looked great she does look great and, you know, her and Candy chit chat. They had some little restaurant eating some food or whatnot. And, you know, she just said, how you did at my wedding. It was all this drama that nobody knew about. You know, I had a, some one of my bridesmaids choke the wedding planner. Um, she didn't bring up how close the, the girl, Shanita. And she showed Shanita maybe two, the was it the wedding episode? Or when her and Cynthia went and got them colonics, the best friend was the, the girl was there, Shanita. And she brings up how her and the girl, Shanita, then fell out. Um, and stuff just got crazy. You know, she brings up how, again, her and Mike wants to move. And so the house they're in now, they want to move out of. They want to, like, buy and renovate some home. So they're going to move out of the home they're in now. And then move into a second home. And then while they're in that second home, they're going to buy a third home and renovate that. And then once that's done, they renovate it, they'll move into that third home, which will be their final home. And Ken, like, why would they move from one rental to the other? Well, and she's like, that's just, that's so weird. That's different and that's weird or whatever. And I said, well, you know, do something a little bit different. She also brings up how she has to get a new restraining order or, like, extend the current the current restraining order against Marley's dad, Kevin McCall, okay? And she brings up because, you know, he's, you know, he has these issues. He's not always sane. And she's like, sometimes, like, I have, I, like, I've had to move five times because he keeps finding where I live or whatever. Like, I've walked out my house, like, on my balcony, and he's just out there looking at us. He, like, she's like, so I just, you know, I keep moving. And I feel two different ways about that. 
Um. My mouth was so dry. I feel like her and Kevin has had issues for years. And we, for the most part, have seen it play out on social media. I noticed recently, it may have been the last month, it was a couple of weeks ago, Kevin was on IG, just in how he misses his daughter. Because he, he not only has Marley, he has another daughter who he doesn't have um, rights to. I don't know how to do that. He, He's not in either one of his children's lives because of his issues. Okay, I think I do think he has mental issues. So he's not in either of their lives. And we have seen him spiral on social media. So I feel like we know he's not all the way there. And I believe even so like I'm going to keep up this PPO until he is okay. And I don't mean okay for a day or two or a week or two. I mean like con continuously okay. Because he has continuously not been okay. That's why she keeps getting the order extended. So, you know, we're going to leave it at that. So, we do see this conversation between Nene and Greg. And this is why I said Nene needs to be slapped in the face multiple times with pillows. Okay? Some memory foam pillows. You know what I'm saying? Some pillow top pillows. Just all up in, just all up in the face. So, they sound like chit chat. Okay? And first, she made him a dream. He like, well, you know, I can't, I can't have ice. I can't touch anything cold. Oh, I forgot. Okay, that to me would be funny. Anyway, they sit on that chit chat, and he said, oh, you know, I know this ain't gonna be good. So she tells him how, you know, you've been really mean recently. You know, what I'm you've been really mean, and you know, what I'm saying I don't like it. Like it's just tough. He says, I know. I realized that y'all know my window open. That's how the, the fans, the curtains blown because the window's open. Um, he says, you know, I know that. He says, and I don't know where it came from, but I do know that happened to me. He says, I've been so afraid, you know, going through this and I have emotions I never knew I had because this the situation has been pretty severe. Now, when he said that, any sane, rational, loving, emotion filled normal person would say you know what you're right you're right the way greg said it the way he said i've been so afraid going through this and i have emotions i never knew i had that right there means i ain't doing shit intentionally it means i'm going through something and these emotions in me are just coming out but none of it none of it is intentional okay Nene then says I just want you to know how you being sick has affected me because you being sick has affected us both and it's been hard for me that's what Nene said you know she said you do so much for you, you know you would do so much for me and now I have to do it all myself because you can't do it so I have a lot of pressure on me now she said this after he said I do not know. <laughs> oh, she ain't so mad. She said that after he said, I'm going through these things and I never knew what these emotions was in me. He telling her, I ain't doing shit on purpose. And her words was, it's a lot of pressure on me. After your husband who has cancer told you he is afraid of what he's going through. And his situation is very severe. I said, bitch, you jolly green giant ass bitch. Nene at that point pissed me the fuck off. Because I feel like she really wants everything to be about her. I just, in sickness and in health, he's sick. You not. He just told you. That man just said, I'm scared about what I'm going through. And you said, it's so much pressure on me because what you used to be able to do for me, you can't do it anymore. And I, I have to do it. Ain't you a rich bitch? You can't pay someone to do it for you, bitch? No? Well, you must not be that goddamn rich. You know, he then says, no, she then says, do you get what I go through? 
you know what I'm saying? You have been so mean. I felt alone and like I want to break up or whatever. He like, I didn't want to make you feel that way. You know, that's not my intent. You know, you haven't told me these things and I can only re react to what you tell me. Well, I didn't think that you can take me telling you all this. <sighs> he says, I wish I could do more. But I'm dealing with something I don't understand. And when he said that, I say, and she's still not saying, you know what, Greg? Maybe I need to check myself. Because you are going through something that you are going through something that you don't understand. <sighs> Nene is a piece of shit. Like, she is a piece of shit. Even though she said, you know, I know I have, I have not been the best caretaker. You have not been the best wife. In the midst of his cancer battle, in the midst of his of this of this storm, in the midst of him being sick, you still make it about you. You still making it about the things that your husband, who was sick and could damn near be dying, you're making about what he used to do for you that he cannot do for you because he has cancer. And y'all know that she was on her YouTube channel saying, like, how do we know that, you know, a person getting sick isn't karma for cheating on someone? I said, bitch, what? <sighs> Greg said, you know, please know as difficult as I make it, it's not intentional, you know what I'm saying? If I have been mean, I apologize. He says, I, you know, he also brings up how he wants to revisit the conversation of having chemo. Because at first he did not want chemo. He says, but, you know, he said, I've thought about it, I've talked to God about it, and I may need to... Do chemo. Nene, I say this from the deepest part of my heart. Okay? And I, I mean this with love. Okay? You ain't shit. You ain't shit. You ain't shit. You ain't shit. You are the lowest form of a wife. Simply because any time you hear a man, your husband say... I'm scared about what I'm going through, and I just have these emotions coming up out of me, and I don't know where they're coming from. Like, for you to not even just pause and say, you know what, I know it's tough on him, and it's tough on me too as a kid. I, I know it's, it's tough on me too. Maybe I should not be so sensitive. Maybe I should go to a goddamn group for caretakers to make sure that I'm getting the proper attention from people who know what I'm going through. You don't know what Greg going through. The same way Greg don't know what you're going through. What you can do is put your frustration and your I have so much on my shoulders on him. You old punk ass bitch. She's made me mad. And that's all. She ain't shit. Anyway, um, they had the OLG party, whatever. Everyone is there. Even, every, you know, look, Eva was there. Tanya, Cynthia, Candy, Shamari, Nene, and Marlo eventually came. But even No Name Drunk Girl was there. I'm like, why does No Name Drunk Girl keep popping up? We don't need her. We don't want her. Why is No Name Drunk Girl at the party? Go ahead on. I went to Howard. Was it Howard? I was a chip. At wh whoever she was, but it, it, we got dying piece touching her thigh. Anyway, you know, they up there now before Marlo and Nene got there, uh, Tanya pulled Eva to the side and said, you know what, I, like, I need to have a conversation with you. And Eva's like, is this like a, a private conversation? She's like, yeah, like, it should be private. I can respect Tanya because Tanya could have easily said whatever in front of whoever. But Tanya, like, you know what, I'm seeing Eva. Let me tell her something because I feel like she may be about to get ambush okay and so she tells her how someone how she was with marlo and nini the girl day or whatever and how marlo was saying things that people told her and how someone she knows is telling marlo all these things and she's like your credit is bad you know what I'm saying? you don't live in your house or whatever and i like how tanya said like you know what i'm saying everyone has bad credit that's not even a big thing and i mean my credit ain't bad it used to be, though. But, you know, I get her. It's like someone's talking about you as if you're not human. And it's crazy. And I didn't want you to. I didn't want to keep holding this in and not. Because I see I see you. And I know this. So I can't not tell you. That's what friends do. That's what friends do. Point blank, period. Anyway, Eva say, like, who the fuck can't hear my credit score? Like, how can someone say that bad credit? Like, that's just crazy. And she said, I never said that I own, like, that is in my house. I'm, we rent, we're renting. I don't think Eva has ever said, look at my fabulous house that I own. I don't think anyone has said that um, Cynthia did after she bought her house. Can't, 
after someone bought their house, they say, look at the house that I bought. I don't think Eve has ever said, like, look, look at the house we own. But, bitch, I live here. Like, I rent this apartment. So, bitch, this is my house. Like, that's where I live. Pay bills, bitch. Do I own the whole building? No. But I rent. This, this, this is my space. So, Eva is like, you know what? I know who did it. And it was that bitch Shanita. Because she was trying to drag my name in the mud. It's some bullshit. You know what I'm saying? She brings up how she's like she tried to take like 1% of thing, something that was true and just spin it into something negative, something mean, something evil, and all lies. I'm like, okay. So she gets her purse and she leaves. Fuck this shit. I'm going home. I'm calling Mike. And then she leaves. And she brings up how anyone who sits around and gathers dirt is just childish. She mean that Nene and Marlo sitting around kicking because they were kicking more 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 marlo she's talking about more marlo than any but still like you're up here trying to gather these these this information you ain't shit and you childish so nini then gets there as eva leaves and then when they're like what what happened Tang said well you know i was talking to her i told her things that happened and she got mad and she left nini is then upset saying well who told you to talk to her like what can you write and Tane said because I'm I'm her friend I, I was there when it happened I was told these things and I told her I did not want her to not know Nene bitch it ain't all about you Nene needed a scene and so she wanted her that to be her scene is what she wanted and so to act like Tanya did not have the right to tell Eva was stupid first of all Tanya didn't tell Eva something that she heard third hand. Tanya was there. When something happens, the people who have the right to tell somebody is someone who was there. It wasn't as if she heard some third hand or, or like Marlo told you something that Nina then told you. Then she should not have told. But anyway, she was sitting there with you and with Marlo, listening to the exact same conversation. Well, you know, we made it we made a pact that we would not tell her that I would tell her. Girl, the fuck by. Anyway, Marlo come in and then they both hurt me. I can't believe you. We said that he fuck you. Fuck you, Marlo, and fuck you, Nini. Anyway, I like how things say, you know, look, if you my if someone's my friend and I hear stuff, when I see you, I'm going to tell you because I'm your friend. Well, y'all really friends? I mean, I, do, I, do you really know her? Tanya said, yes, I do. And it doesn't matter how long I've known her. Come through. T Tanya is finally getting getting tired of me and coming for her. And I appreciate how she said, what make, yes, I told her. Whatever. Now, she then said, well, I'm sorry if I finished y'all. I wouldn't have done that. But Nene full of shit and so is Marlo. So at this point in time, um, Marlo then said, yeah, they said she's a, that she's a lesbian in L.A. And like, she has a whole L.A. lesbian relationship. I'm like, lesbian? Like, what? Girl, Marlo just, just, she's messy. She's messy, messy Marlo. So, Nene then goes to call Eva. And Eva's like, I'm messed up. I'm mad or whatever. I'm not going to entertain that bullshit. I'll talk to you because I respect you, but I'll talk to you off camera and with no mics. Nene then says, okay. Nene then, you see the camera. You hear Nene saying, she wants me to not have a mic on. She going to kill me for wearing my mic. Then why did you, girl. We then hear Eva is there. Mike is there. And Mike is saying how, you know, people all up in our business or whatever. The reason we're moving and the, the, the house stuff is because we have a whole issue with her with her child's father. And, you know, it's the, the FBI being involved. It's always something. Like, and it's for protection. But, you know, he's like, but I told her that she should go back and just defend herself. Because if not, it's going to seem as if it's true. So, Eva does come back. Eva then just says, like... Okay, it's like I told Candy, yes, we're moving, you know what I'm saying, because <clears throat> it's issues with my child's father. She also brings up how she did fall out with a friend, <clears throat> and that, that said friend is trying to sign her name, and she knows who it is, but you know what I'm saying, it's bullshit, bullshit, bullshit. You know, she, she brings up that, you know, I do have a PPO against my ex because he always finds me when I'm moving. No matter where I move, I keep moving because he keeps finding me. Marlo then says to Candy, you know she lying. You know she lying. That ain't true. He ain't looking for her. He ain't checking for her. He be on social media saying he wants his daughter. He be on social media saying, like, he, the way he moves on social media, you would believe he do be stalking that girl. And I think because they have whatever history, 
she still fears him for whatever the reasons may be. But I'm like, Marlo, you don't know that lady's life at all. So who are you to say that she... Look. Marlo ain't shit either. <laughs> That's why she friends with Nene. So... Marlo then says, well, you know, well, I've been hearing things, and I've been holding it in or whatever, but you should pay your bills on time, and why do you talk to us, and you should keep it real. Keep it real. Evil, like, you know what I'm saying? Um, whatever. She do bring up, like, you know what? I feel like I've known Nene well enough that her sitting around cackling where Marlo was some bullshit because she should have said something, and she should have, but she did not. Um, look. Marlo ain't shit, Nini ain't shit. That's it. Peace. He's like love, 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 and you.